This is the combination wrench that we're going to make. Maybe not this exact one. This is one that I just threw together quickly to practice for this screencast. It's based on this drawing right here, which of course we'll look at from time to time and include. If you've used CAD programs before, this would be a snap to make because these sorts of uh, radii in here can be made with a tangent tangent radius command and that's something that most of these free CAD programs don't have ones that anyways like SketchUp or Tinkercad. In any event uh, we're going to modify it. We're going to put a box end on this end and uh, you know maybe change a few dimensions. We're going to have to guess on some others but that's okay. Some of the mistakes uh, or things I want to change is that notice right here uh, the number of segments for the circles, that's pretty chunky. I mean, it's okay. You know, I'd like it to be smoother so it looks more lifelike. I got an extra hole here from when I did a uh, grouping or a subtraction. Didn't quite nail this cut right here, but we'll try to do better as we make it. So let's go ahead and get started. I've now got a project folder for my FPU files. And so I'm going to go ahead and make a new 3D design and first thing I'm going to do is just take and drop a ruler out here pretty much right in the middle of the grid so that I've got an origin. And then I'm going to bring a cylinder out and just plop it down. When we look at our working drawing here, this out here has a radius of 16 so that's a diameter of 32. So we'll go back to Tinkercad and just make that 32 and 32 and then the height of it I'm going to just go ahead and make that I think about 8 that looks pretty good I'll change my mind I'm gonna make it 7 you can make yours any size you want and then again when we come back and look at the working drawing we can see that the center of this end and the center of this end is 100 millimeters what I'll do is I'm just going to go to my top view here and I'm going to start to move it and you can see that my ruler right here is measuring from this far edge to the origin 70 but I want it to be to the midpoint so let's see so I got too much stuff there we go click so now it's set to the midpoint let's turn off perspective and so now I'll just type in minus 50 and I'm halfway there. So the next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and go command D or control D and I'm going to start to move this and just move it down here like so and again it's measuring to the midpoint so I'll just type in 50 and check my other dimensions. I'm going to make this end smaller. I'm going to make this end um, I'm just going to say 25 and 25 but this did not change because I set it to snap to the midpoint. Before I start working on one of the wrench ends, a couple of things I need to do. One is change the name of my file. It's something I uh, typically forget to do initially but the nice thing is, is that if your computer crashes, Tinkercad's saving this in the cloud. The other thing I want to check is I want to make sure that the center of, the, of these are lined up. So if I click on this, I can see that the distance vertically is to the midpoint, because that's what we're snapping to, measuring to, or is the midpoint, is 6 millimeters. And when I click over here, it's 6 millimeters as well. So let's type in F to come into here. And let's go ahead and look back at our drawing. And what we have, this is a 17 millimeter wrench. And so the distance between these two parallel lines are 17 millimeters. And they are rotated up 17 degrees. So let's take care of that. So let's see, come back into Tinkercad. And I'm going to bring a box out. I'll just put it right there. I'm just going to make all of these 17 and the width 17 and the next one 17 and then I'm going to make it a hole and then I'm going to rotate it down 
17 degrees. And then I'm going to go ahead and just move it over here. As I'm nudging this around with my arrow keys, I'm starting to realize that this cube that I made right here doesn't quite go back far enough. Now, if I change the measurements down here or try to scale it, it doesn't actually scale the cube. What it does is it scales this box that goes around here. And that doesn't help me out. So I'm going to undo that right there. I'm going to kind of orbit around like this so that I can see what I'm doing. And I am going to unrotate this 17 degrees. So I'll pull out here and bring it back so that it's square like that. And then I'm going to take this dimension right here and I'll, I don't know, just make it 25 so it's kind of nice and big. Then rotate it back 17 degrees. Go to my top view so things are a little bit easier to see. And now I'm just going to drag it to about right there. And at this point, I think I can go ahead and group them. So I'll drag a selection box around my orange disc and my rectangular solid and I'll group them and boom. Now that wasn't, I didn't like that. It's just a little too deep. So I'm going to just deselect everything and select this box and kind of move it out to about there. Maybe I was okay, but I wanted to point out that after you rotate something, these dimensions right here, this 23.57 is from up here to down here. This still remains 17 millimeters, but that can only be edited, as far as I know anyways, unless you rotate it back. So now I'll go ahead and shift click, select both of those, and I like that. Okay, when we go back and Look at our drawing right here. We have just this little arc. It has a radius of 13, but we're just going to kind of spitball it. So going back to Tinkercad, I'm going to bring in a round roof. That's just a half cylinder. I'm going to kind of orbit around here until I can see the arrows. Pull out here and rotate around. There we go. This part right here, this dimension needs to be 17. So I'm going to hit enter and then let's see, I'm going to go back to my top view and then I'm going to scale this down. It's kind of what looks good. And then I am going to rotate it around. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of math here since we want it to be seven degrees off. If we take 90 and subtract 17 from it, we get 73. So we've got that right there, and we should be able to come up and put that in place. So let's see, what if, I have my snap grid right now set to 0.1 millimeter. So now it's going to be close enough for government work. So I'll snap it over there, and I'll bump it down one, and when I examine that corner right there, that looks pretty good. So it looks like my computer froze up or the web browser or whatever. So I'm just going to try pressing F and nothing's happening. Okay, there it came back. So Tinkercad was doing some work in the background, it looks like. We're going to call that good. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to make it a hole and I'm going to grab both of those and group them and I've now got what to me looks like a pretty reasonable opening for the wrench. This right here now is just one big group and let's go ahead and start to work on the other end. Now when I zoomed in on this end right here I noticed that I had all those faces there so I want to turn the sides up just to sort of smooth it out. I'll go ahead and max it out. That maybe slows down the computers on Autodesk side of the house a little bit, but I'm pretty sure for this simple project we're going to be okay. I'm going to go back to my home view, select this one, because I need to do the same thing. 
but when I click on it up here I do not have those sliders to set the parameters like I would like and that's because it's all grouped together so let's ungroup it and then we'll select on it still oh, we need to ungroup it one more time and then we'll select it and now I can ramp those sides up and then I can select all of the geometry here group it and we're right back where we were before so let's select this side here and zoom in and let's bring out a polygon now in this case the measurements for the polygon I want the flat sides which are right down here I want those to be exactly 17 so I'm just gonna grab this corner here hold down the shift key so it scales everything proportionally and get as close to 17 as I can which will be just fine for our project there you go 16.97 so that looks pretty good and that'll that'll certainly be close enough now I'm going to take this and duplicate it and then I'm going to move this 30 degrees Oh, there we go where's 30 there we go so we go to our top view here you can see now that we have a 12 point socket so or an opening so I'm gonna grab those items right there and I'm going to group them together and I'm gonna make them a hole and then I'm gonna hold down my shift key and select those two and align them by the midpoint and the midpoint and then I'll select all of this geometry here and group it and I've now got a 12 point end for a 17 millimeter nut so now we want to go ahead and make the handle to connect the open end and the closed end of our wrench so I'm going to bring in a box and then I'm going to take a look at my drawing and I can see that it is 11 millimeters wide so that means that this dimension right here needs to be 11 and the height I'm just gonna make that 4 yeah it looks pretty good and let's see what else have we got oh the length now before I lengthen it I wanna go ahead and put a smooth radius on these edges so I'm going to turn up the radius some to give me kind of a a nice smooth radius right here now it does it to the ends also now let's turn the number of steps up so that it's super smooth and then let's turn the length let's see which direction is it, it must be this one right here the width so let's turn the width up quite a bit I'll type in F for fit and the reason I'm doing this is that these ends right here I don't want round ends on them so I'm going to go to my top view and I'm going to bring out a box here and I'm going to bring out a box here and then I'm going to take this this and this all three pieces it tells you right up here you have three shapes and I'm going to union them so I've now got square ends on there so let's bring it up here and then we'll zoom in here a little bit so we can see what we're doing now let's see I'll pull this end out about there that looks good and I'll pull this end to about right there that should do it I'll type in F for fit I'll kind of spin it around here a little bit I'll do a control or command a to select all and I'm going to click on a line so I want everything to be aligned by the midpoint and that's looking pretty good now let's see how about this one here oh yeah we needed to do that one as well now if you look at a real combination wrench while the handle is in the same plane as the open end 
but the closed end is different. It is tipped up usually about 15 degrees. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to zoom up here and let's see, oh, it's right up here. So I'm going to pull that out to about 15 degrees and then I need to nudge it up some and this is where you're just kind of spitballing. It's trying to get it to where it looks pretty good. Let's look down at the top and that looks pretty good. So I think we're getting pretty close to done. Let's just kind of look around here. Yep, I like that. So I'll type in F for fit so I can see everything. We're going to draw a selection box to grab everything, group them together, and then I'm going to go to my colors here. And you can pick any color you want. I'm just going to go ahead and pick a light gray that sort of looks silverish. And I'm going to call that good. Okay, I know I said we were done, but then when I was writing up the narrative, all of a sudden I got this idea and I thought well we can uh, even make this cooler and learn a new skill. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull text out and up here in my text field I'm going to write in Westland Tools. Of course you can write in whatever you want and I'll just hit enter. You want to change the font you can do that but it's no big deal. The height's irrelevant number of segments. I mean we could turn that up, turn that down, but quite honestly that's irrelevant also. So I'm going to go ahead and type in F for fit. I'm going to go to my top view here, hold down my shift key so I can scale proportionally and then select this and uh, bring it up to about there. So F for fit and hold it around just a little bit and I'm going to grab that cone and I'll pull it up above and then I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to pull it down until it kind of sinks into the wrench. Of course we don't want it to go all the way through. I'm going to go to my top view and just kind of spitball getting it centered. That looks pretty good. I'm going to change it to a hole and then I'm going to just orbit around so I can watch the magic. I'm going to grab the wrench and the text and group them together or do a Boolean union. And what do you think about that? That is definitely worth an extra three minutes.